Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Um, Alex here. In today's tutorial I want to go through how to create a star field in Blender. We'll do this nice, quick and uh, not so dirty. Now in my previous video I created a star field in uh, Unreal Engine. I showed you guys how to quickly do that and it was quite straightforward, quite simple. So I want to, to maintain that sort of approach and do the same thing in Blender, obviously following a different sort of set of rules, but uh, it should be quite straightforward and you should anybody should be able to do it with a minimal amount of tools. So I am running a bit of a um a giveaway so if you guys comment um and subscribe to the channel i will make sure that at the end of the month uh i will be doing a um sort of a giveaway where uh, whoever's commented and subscribed to the channel has a chance of winning all of the blender content that i'm offering on our station so have a look on that website and you'll see what uh, i have to offer there's some uh, blender nebula generators in there there's some uh, planets some asteroids and, and so on uh and yeah you guys can have those if you if you obviously if you comment and subscribe and if you win the draw which is going to be a random commentator from uh below so yeah Feel free to, to do that. And now let's um, jump straight into the tutorial. Uh, so what I've got here, I've got a Blender scene. This is one of the scenes that's available on our station. And this is one of the, the one of the scenes that you would be winning if you uh, uh, decide to do that. It's also it's got an animation in it where basically there's like um, it's like an animated ship flying through and going towards this planet. But one thing that you'll be noticing in here is that the um you know the background is bland it's just black so we want to create a star field for that so i'm just going to keep this sort of um, set up in here this camera just so we can see what we're doing and in the shader editor over in uh, over in here on the left side where i've got a new viewport opened i've got my shader editor open and i've got the world selected so everybody who does this will have a background uh, plugged into a surface and it's generally going to have like a, a color a gray color or whatever so i'll put that to black and a strength of one but that is meaningless in our setup because we don't need it i mean if we delete that nothing will really happen the environment will remain black anyway but instead, uh, what we want to do is we want to bring in, so shift A on the keyboard and search for a uh, color ramp. Okay, and the color ramp, the color of the color ramp, we can insert into the surface. And now all of a sudden something has happened, as you can see. And we want to also link in here a noise texture. So we're going to, sorry, not the color ramp. We're going to search for a noise uh, texture okay and then we can plug the uh, fac from the noise texture into this fac uh, from the color ramp with the noise section now in there we can um, have a look at changing some of the parameters on here on the noise section so the factor uh, of the noise section is connected to the factor of the color ramp but now we're not really seeing anything apart from a very white well not very white it's like a sort of obviously a gradient between the uh, this black color and this white color okay so the first thing we want to do is select the black color and bring it to a let's say about 0.8 and obviously this now adds um, a black the black is the one it's the it's the color that's now the most um, it, you know it's take, take, taking the whole sort of gamut of the of the gamma in here but uh, we can use the noise texture to tell it where the whites can actually come through so the first thing we're going to do is set this scale to a thousand and we'll leave it as 3d the detail will use it 4.5 and then a roughness of zero so that that's brought it already in and a distortion of zero as well so we all of a sudden have stars within the scene and that only took us you know like a few well less than a minute really if you're just doing this and these stars you know that you're seeing over here you can actually create a separate sort of uh, node setup uh, you know duplicating that and then maybe do like a 200 in here you know and if I sort of connect this one, then we have bigger stars. So imagine you could mix between the two of these. So you could act, add a mix RGB in here and just mix between these two uh, colors like that. 
and now you're gonna have a, both of them showing up and then obviously depending on which one you want to be to make it brighter or something like that you could do that you could also play around with the uh, with the luminosity of the color ramps so you know you get two different sort of stars combined and you can also change the color of these by the way like the, the white color could be any color that you want um, so it's very important that you understand uh, this is a this is a procedural sort of method and uh, you, you know you can add so many different effects so many squiggles whatever whatever other noise sections you want to use in this um, okay so now one thing that I also want to do here I will delete uh, this sort of entire thing that I've added and just leave the, these two notes I do want to show you guys how you can use this in a more intricate sort of manner um with uh with, with some with, with some of my previous products that i've got on our station as well the sky boxes that i offer it's going to be a very easy setup for you to be able to use sky boxes as well in combination with the star field to make it look a lot more interesting so on my profile on our station if you will um have a look i do offer um some volumes some uh, skybox volumes as I like to call them I've got three of them so far so volume one volume two volume three if we actually click on any of these for example this one uh, you'll notice that I've got these skyboxes in the background in there and we can have those added into blender uh, so we can, we can have those basically added into Blender as uh, and mixed with the star field that we've just generated. Uh, so I find that it's very, very cool. Uh, so what we'll do is I'm going to go back into Blender in here. And I do want to add a um, image texture. So you can bring in an image texture. I'm going to change this. So I've got the... Um, actually, it's not an image texture that I need. Let me just have a... Let me just find... The proper texture so that will be the environment texture and then i can open um i do i'm gonna bring this one in here so um i've got these obviously you can you you can learn you you can learn yourself how to create these textures using mid journey uh using uh, other software I, I do have tutorials on my youtube i'm gonna link them down below how i generate um sky boxes so you can make your own that look very very interesting as well um so with this uh, texture brought in I am going to add the texture coordinate, a mapping coordinate to it. So by pressing Control T, if you have the Node Wrangler set up, if not, just bring in these nodes. Make sure it's the generator that's connected in here. And then with this, I want to then connect it to the surface, and this will, um, you know, bring in this skybox. So it will take a bit of a, it will take a bit of a time for it to load because it's a very heavy texture. Uh, but once it does, if we move, if we put, pan around the scene. That is the skybox that we just brought in. So that looks pretty cool. Let's just uh, set ourselves up in a sort of an angle where we can see some of that. Um, actually, I don't think I've got a good angle anyway on this. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look at it that way. Obviously the camera setup could be done better to be able to visualize it. But I've got that in there and now I need to sort of combine it with my color, uh, with my star field as well. So what you want to do is bring in a mix RGB okay and with this uh, with this in here we can connect the color ramp uh, over in here and then we can also connect this um, map over here as well and that can go in the surface which and then that obviously gives us a sort of a com combined version of both this um, this uh, texture and the star field now one thing that you'll notice is that the stars pretty much blend in with the texture and if, if you if you want to change that if you want that to be different if you want the stars to not be visible wherever the nebula is there is a way to do that as well so i'll show you guys in just a second how that is um so what you want to do is the factor in here you want to drive that by the color of the texture um and then when you do that you'll want you know you can keep this as a well you, you probably will want to keep this as a mix as well but what happens is you're not being able to see the stars at all now. And this is not exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp and drag it in here so that the factor is being affected by the color ramp. I'm going to change this to a B spline. Uh, and then I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to change my parameters this way. Right now I can't, I can see the nebula over there, but it's completely overtaken. So if I bring the white color all the way here, and I'm also going to make it into a bit of a darker value, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to bring this as close to it as possible. And you can see we have a bit of a blend there. 
Now, it's important that you sort of find the right balance here, depending on what sort of texture you're using, you know, because you can see it's sort of eating out of the nebula as you're doing this. But the more you bring this slider, the black slider, closer, the more the, the stars sort of start to disappear from the nebula entirely, wherever the brightest areas exist. And this gives you a sort of a nice sort of effect there. Uh, now, you can change from blee spline to something else, maybe a cardinal. Um, so, you know, for example, you could do you could do something like that and bring the cardinal to a 0 0.001. And you can see now I've got a bit of a harder edge there. Yeah, so you can see that. And depending on how you've done your skybox, you could also generate in here some black uh, or, or maybe like a bit of a... You know, you could use a, an alpha map. I, I use that as well. So, for example, I could duplicate this. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to use the same sort of texture coordinate in here. And I can open a new texture. So I do have an alpha for that. So I can use the alpha and plug that in there. Uh, which will then sort of change the way this behaves a bit more. Because the alpha is a black and white. It is a black and white sort of texture. So that changes things. Um, and once that's uh, once that's loaded, which hopefully it has done, uh, okay, there we go. Now you can see the alpha is creating a far sort of uh, harder edge. Also, my computer is starting to take a bit of a slowdown from all the uh, um, from because of the uh, resolution of these textures because they're quite high resolution. So I've now inverted it, as you can see, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to drag this like that and. You can see now how the alpha works uh, differently through the texture, you know, just by using the alpha in there. Um, yeah. Right, so that was a massive slowdown, as you've seen. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a setup in Blender that I've done. Again, if you want these skyboxes, uh, you can get them off of our station. Also, guys, just a quick one. I would like to say that my products are available on Creo Interactive, which is an amazing platform. It's actually a, it's got a very interesting subscription model. So if you head on over to Creo Interactive, what they'll do is, uh, I mean, you can see here, this is my this is my page. You can subscribe for $7 a month and you get access to all of the content that I've got in here that is available to subscribers and pretty much all the content that I do is available to subscribers. You can also buy it directly if you want. But what's really cool about this platform is that if you subscribe to me you're supporting me directly but also you can go on the Creo website and then subscribe to multiple people and you can get all of those products as well as part of the subscription you can download them uh, always for free because you are a subscriber so you get access to anybody on this platform that has uploaded content that you subscribe to and you there is no limit to how many people you can subscribe to you can subscribe to 100 people so you get the content available from 100 people plus my own as well you can download at any point and you also get the updated content whenever i add some more and it's, it's just honestly it's amazing and i keep adding products to it i've got about four right now so please have a look at that if you would like if you want to support me and if you want to support the platform and also get available uh, access to, avail to available content right now on the platform it's really awesome game resources wallpapers all sorts of things that you guys might be interested in uh, so yeah uh, please feel free to contribute to that if you'd like if not patreon is always uh, available but yeah I think this is a really cool model so I hope to see you I hope to see you guys um, on the platform but you also have a chance of winning them by leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. And yeah, uh, if you are the lucky one, uh, we did have a, a winner uh, for the uh, for the previous video, the one where I did the Unreal Engine 5.1 uh, uh, preview. Um, I think it was, uh, I can't remember now what the name was, but I'll put that on the screen so you guys can see who was the winner. And he's got the projects now. And yeah, we'll see who the next winner will be. So good luck. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, thank you to the supporters on Patreon. Thank you to the supporters on Creo. Um, people who bought the project on our station and Gumroad. Really appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.